Good morning. I'm Lynn. And I'm Arnie. And welcome to another day at Utopia Farms. So today I'm going to basically go through about 12 things that I think you absolutely must have if you're thinking of getting your own sheep farm. And then I will do future videos to follow up on each of those topics um, and go into more depth on them. To start, the first thing you need, which seems really obvious, is you need a farm or some kind of acreage with a land base. Some people purchase their own farms. Farms used to be a really good deal um, because everybody was moving to the cities and you could get farms for really reasonable prices um, from people who were getting out, old homesteads that were folding up. Nowadays it seems to be opposite. It's almost like having waterfront property. Um, agricultural land is uh, disappearing and uh, as a result land prices are quite high and buying a farm can be quite expensive I think in most areas of the world. So a lot of people uh, will save up and buy a farm, an old farm. Some will have uh, barns already there that you can fix up. Some will be ready to move in and some people may just uh, have a few acres and with no uh, barns on at all. But um, once you have your farm and your land base, then you can uh, make all your decisions from there. I hear quite a few people um, not only will rent land, but they'll also rent uh, barns and stuff as well because they can't afford to buy them. And that's another option, but that's something uh, you'll have to put into your financial plan. And that leads to uh, item number two, which is you gotta have a plan. So by a plan, I mean, what do you actually want to achieve by becoming a sheep farmer? Do you want to have um, 400 to 1,000 sheep and do this as a full-time job and get out of the rat race in the city? Or would you like um, maybe to raise 20 heritage sheep as a hobby? Or perhaps you like spinner, like spinning and weaving wool and thought uh, a little flock of fiber animals would be nice? So um, what you want to do or achieve with your uh, sheep farm needs is extremely important because that will determine how you do all the other steps in uh, starting a sheep farm. And with that plan, you also need to include the financial part. Are you gonna have to try uh, borrow money and get a bank on board to help you get started? In which case you might wanna talk to them ahead of a time because in farming, it's not really a stable income because you have seasons where you're pulling in a lot of money um, and you have seasons where you won't make any income for maybe six months before you get your next check. Banks don't often like to see that. They like to see a steady flow of income. So um, you may have to depend on a second job or maybe you've got savings. Um, do you have to invest in certain things for your sheep farm, like equipment, barns, shelter, fencing, whatever. But um, finding out how much things cost and having the money available to achieve those goals so that you can set up your sheep farm is just import as important. So um, have a plan and things will go much more smoothly for you. If you're going to have sheep, you also need housing or shelter for them. So um, a lot of people will have their sheep on pasture, like we do. Some people will have them on pasture all year round. But even if you have them out there all year round, they should have an area where they can get shelter if they need it 
from uh, heavy rains, um, heavy winds, um, really, really strong sun where it's really hot, where they can get shade. And all they require is a lean-to. Like our rams, even though we're in Canada and the temperatures get quite cold in the winter time and they get quite hot in the summer, our rams are outside year round. Um, they have access to those pastures, but in inclement weather conditions, they do have this lean-to at the front of the barn, which is facing south, where they can seek shelter. And if, the, if it's really, really bad weather, we have a little area that they can actually walk into back there where they can uh, cuddle up even more and stay warm so um, likewise if you're in a pasture system um, you can easily rig up with panels and a tarp or whatever just something small uh, that the sheep can go to if they really need to get out of the terrible conditions Sheep are very, very hardy. They can tolerate a lot, but um, for their proper care, they really do need to have escape from really bad conditions. You can also have a permanent structure as a, as a barn to house your sheep in, either full-time or temporary, whatever. They're very nice to have. We do all our lambing uh, that in the solid barn that we have because it um, holds its heat the best in the winter time when we're lambing and it is also the coolest in the summertime so and it's also very good for breeding out of season because it's a darker barn these old barns are darker these solid barns and we have much better luck breeding in these dark barns if um, it is kind of a little bit accelerated breeding because it mimics um, fall conditions. But another option is the tarp buildings. So at our farm, as you know, we have three of these tarp buildings where most of our sheep are housed year round. Um, we, we do confinement and pasture uh, raising for our sheep, so um, they are free to go to pasture most times of the year, but they always do come in at night. Tarp barns are considered a semi-permanent structure, and in Canada anyway, or Ontario, um, they're insured a little differently than permanent buildings. Um, yeah, they consider these more like a tent. We like these a lot, um, but, um, this is just another option for housing your sheep. They're less expensive than a solid barn, but they're more expensive than a lean-to. And uh, in future videos, I will uh, talk about um, the various types of housing and which ones we prefer and why. But for now, these are just some options you can have for housing your sheep. Another thing you absolutely have to have for your sheep is feed. So a sheep's main diet, like we've mentioned in previous videos, is grasses. Grasses can take the form of pastures when they're growing in the field or as hay once it's been cut and put in bale form and dried. Either way, it is grasses and sheep need it. It has to be um, good, good grasses, like good hay. Um, there can't be any mold or dust in it at all. Sheep are very susceptible to mold in the hay. Um, it can cause listeriosis, which most frequently leads to death. So you wanna make sure your, your feed has no mold in it. Dust is not great either because their heads are in that quite a bit and they'll be breathing it in and you can get coughing and pneumonia and stuff resulting from um, all the dust irritating their lungs. So you wanna make sure you have a good source of uh, quality hay. In uh, North America, we tend to use mixed grasses and combine it with some legumes for added protein, such as um, 
clovers, alfalfa, stuff like that. And if your hay doesn't have the nutritional levels that it should have, you can always supplement with grain. At our farm, we use a corn barley mixture for the ewes. And for the lambs, we add soy, uh, soybean, soybeans to that ration because a uh, growing lamb needs a little bit more protein. We want their daily ration to be around 16% protein. Lambs may be a little bit higher, but if your total feed is in that level, you'll be doing fine. Just watch the conditions, but feed is important. So in your plan and with all your facilities that you want to have at your farm, that's uh, feeding is something else you really need to plan for like are you going to feed just hay um are you going to feed tmr are you going to just do pasture um rarely do any of those methods require only one way of feeding usually you have to supplement in some form or another no matter what system you use because nothing is perfect and you do want good nutrition for your sheep and as you can see right now, I'm in the Dorset barn. And I think we have maybe six sh lambs way back there that aren't in the creep area. Everybody else is out here now eating. So they're really liking this creep pen where they don't have to feed, uh, fight for feeder space with their moms. And this is where you'll really start to see the, the lambs changing and growing because um, now they're able to eat as much as they want to eat. Mom's not restricting them off. Like <laughs> you've seen it when they go to nurse, a mom will let them nurse for two seconds and then off she'll go. Now they can eat uh, what they want. And the moms will start uh, decreasing their milk production now as the lambs require less and less milk and convert over to adult feed. Another thing that may not be as evident is the fact that sheep require salt and mineral. You see me going around the barns every day. We have our salt and minerals in little feeders like this and we have them in every pen. Most of the feed that you feed your sheep is going to be deficient in something because um, it's impossible to make perfect feed year round even though you may try really hard and that's and some areas will be deficient in certain things um, so the salt and mineral just gives that the sheep that option to go to it as they need it and they do know when they need it and they'll eat that um, along with the salt and mineral you can also add things like limestone as a supplement to the grain, which we do with our rams to prevent stones. Uh, and um, when they're out on lush pasture or you're switching to a really lush feed like um, high alfalfa, you might also want to include bicarb on your list of things that sheep should have readily available free choice for them. And when you have those things available, you should also think of how you're going to feed it to them. We, we've made these little um, feeders that hold the um, salt and mineral. And we like these because uh, they can get their mouths in, but they can't paw at it with their feet. It can't get wet. Um, and it's sometimes they can uh, poop in it but it's very difficult. They have to be really trying hard to do that. Uh, we tried many other containers and stuff for the salt mineral, but inevitably the sheep tipped it over or got their feet in it or it got really dirty. So we find uh, this type of system works extremely well. Hi, hi. Did you just want to say something? Did you want to add anything? I think she was going to say that uh, having free choice mineral, salt and mineral, available um, is something that they will take when they need it, but it's not something they eat like feed. Uh, so it lasts a long time. And if they do uh, eat maybe a little too much of it, 
they're gonna poop it back out in the pasture and it's gonna be added to your field. So nothing gets wasted on a sheep farm anyway. Another thing that you need, which you would think is kind of something that everyone would know, but it's surprising how many people don't have uh, water sources set up for their sheep. So at our farm, we have various types of automatic waterers. Uh, we had them installed. The water lines are under the floors, dug in, because we're in a climate where um, the ground freezes. So the water lines are in there so that we can have fresh, clean water available for our sheep um, every day of the year. That's expensive, but uh, you have to have it. You don't have to have automatic drinkers though. You can uh, have buckets and even in cold climates, you can uh, get little submersible um, heaters and stuff that sit in the buckets and keep the water from freezing. So you can do that. And you can, you can run hoses, but again, in, um, in freezing climates in the wintertime, hoses will freeze up, so you have to have some way to keep those hoses free and running. Um, also with hoses, if you're using like garden hoses, uh, you probably shouldn't do that because they're not designed for um, drinking. So um, the actual stuff they're made of may contain lead or plastics and stuff that fall off. You can buy hoses that are made uh, to drink out of and uh, you'd have to research where you get them, I don't know. But um, things like that you have to consider because sheep drink a lot of water and they have to drink a lot of water because that's what makes their rumens function. It helps them digest all the feed. They have four stomachs, so um, uh, lots of water is critical. Like we've had our uh, lines freeze up in the winter, even underground, just because something. Oh, we like we cleaned out the the barn and we had a minus forty or something, and they actually froze, and had to feed with buckets for a, a few days, and. Basically, we were filling up water troughs all day long. That's how much water they drink. Now, we have a lot of sheep, but even when they're in jugs, um, we feed uh, with, uh, I think they're two gallon pails, and they're easily drinking two to three of those pails each a day. So, water. Make sure you have plenty of it that they can reach at all times. And if you're in pasture, same thing, having troughs set up or, or sources of water where they can get to that water easily and make sure it's clean because no point in them drinking a lot of water that's all dirty and then them getting sick and um, parasites and stuff like that. So fresh, clean water, very, very important. Another thing you absolutely should have is handling equipment and I don't know if I should put handling equipment and feeding equipment in the same category, but um, even if you have six sheep or thousands of sheep, you are eventually going to have to handle them by giving them their shots, uh, trimming their hooves, getting them sheared. Um, you have a six sheep you have to capture, so you always should have some form of handling handling equipment um, where you can catch the sheep easily and run them down a chute. Uh, they're critical. Um, but um, we'll, we'll talk about handling equipment in another video as well. But you can go from elite $50,000 handling systems to uh, just having some plywood and 2 by 4 set up in your barn. Uh, where you can catch them and everything in between again. But um, I would say they are must-haves. And same with feeding systems. You can feed your sheep many different ways. You can feed them in an alleyway with TMR and uh, feed carts. 
You can feed them in basket feeders like we feed our rams at the front of the barn. You can feed them in alleyways like we do in our coveralls. They can be for round bales. They can be for square bales. They can have diagonal slats like we use on our feeders. They can be narrower. They can be wider. They can be horizontal. Um, they can be down on the ground. They can be raised up like ours are. You can use feeders like this um, that you purchase that are quite expensive or you can feed hay and grain at the same time in them. There are many options for feeding. You can make them yourselves, but uh, it's something to plan um, how you would like to feed your sheep and that uh, lets you set up your barn so that you can feed them most efficiently. How you feed the sheep will dictate how you um, run your farm because feeding is something you have to do basically every day unless they're out at pasture. But even out at pasture, um, once the pastures have run out, you're going to have some kind of feeding system out there. So um, you need to prepare and plan for that and how you're going to do it and how you will incorporate your feeding system onto your sheep farm. This here is Sheriff. He's decided that it's easier because he's a ram, you see, and the rams have bigger heads than the ewes. And the ewes can easily pop their heads into all our feeders, but the rams have to push them in a little harder. So, um, like I've mentioned in other videos, if they have to fight for their hay, they don't like that. And Arnie has this uh, round at the end of the feeder here. And you can see that he, rather than putting his head in like all the other ewes are, for him, he finds it easier to eat straight over the top there. Um, he doesn't want to feel like he's being restricted and maybe he's worried about getting his head stuck. So um, when you see sheep eating over the feeder like that, there's usually a reason for it, and it's usually because it's a better solution for them and easier for them. So pay attention to what your sheep are doing because um, that's helpful in designing your feeders too and having them work best for the sheep because um, it being best for the sheep is what's best for you overall as a sheep farmer because you want your sheep eating well. Another thing you're going to need is some type of equipment and quite a few pieces of equipment probably. So you can equipment can range from shovels and pitchforks if you only have a few sheep um, to handle um, cleaning out your barns and uh, forking out hay to your sheep and stuff. Probably you're going to need some form of tractor or a piece of equipment like a skid steer, something where you can lift hay around. Now, if you are really small and you just have a few sheep and you've got only little square bales, um, probably the easiest is to have a pitchfork, a shovel, and small square bales and do everything by hand, some pails and uh, you're good to go because you're hiring in someone to make the hay for you and you're gonna have um, it just brought in so you can just lift the bales to your sheep and when you have to clean it all up afterwards you're gonna shovel it all out by hand and into your little manure pile which you're gonna spread into your garden for instance it can be that easy or it can be um, really um, intensive. If you have a large land base on your farm and you want to grow all the feed for your sheep and you don't wanna hire anybody in to do it for you, you can invest in combines to bring in all the grain your sheep needs, um, hay binds for cutting your hay, uh, tractors, um, different size tractors because uh, the different 
pieces of equipment often need different size tractors, um, things to bale up your hay, um, things to clean out your barn. I mean, you can literally spend a million dollars just on equipment. Or you can go the pitchfork route and everything in between. So that's part of the planning, your goals, where you want to be, and how many sheep you have, and your finances. All these things need to be taken into consideration. Um, so yes, that's part of your plan. What do you need? Um, in another video, I'll go through our farm, you know how many sheep we have. We're running about 450 ewes right now. And we have rams here. And I'll go around and show you all the pieces of, of equipment we have and have had, and which we've kept, which we find most valuable to us, uh, which, we, which ones we probably could have done without or we have gotten rid of over the years. Um, but uh, equipment, uh, you need it, but you have to figure out what you need most. And a lot of the topics kind of overlap and interlock, like um, as far as shelter and feed and equipment go, because um, you obviously need shelter for your animals and feed for your animals and equipment to move stuff around. but. You also need to think about how you're going to store your feed. Um, are you going to put it in your barnyard and cover it with a tarp? Are you going to invest in a wrapper and wrap it all in plastic? Are you going to chop it all up and store it in feed bags or in a pit? Um, all of these things will affect the type of feed you have, the type of equipment you'll need, and the type of facilities or expenses that it will take to store that feed because you cannot have feed just sitting out in the yard. It has to be covered to keep it fresh, to stop it from molding, um, to stop um, animals getting into it other animals like rats and birds and stuff getting in and eating it as well so they're all kind of an interlocking thing there but all considerations you also need to take into account when you're setting up a sheep farm where are you going to put all this feed and where and how are you going to store all your equipment another thing that can kind of overlap with housing is fencing if your sheep are going to be in confinement and never go outside, fencing won't be uh, something you'll need. But if you're going to just even let them out into paddocks, or if you want them out grazing part-time or full-time, fencing is going to be critical. Right now we're letting the rams out. They come in for the night. To keep them safe from coyotes but in the morning we let them go and our farm has paddocks and fencing everywhere so we have our fields where we're doing the crops that have no fencing but anything that has sheep in or will have sheep in is surrounded by a perimeter fence um, made with page wire that is designed specifically for sheep. And we'll walk out with the rams and have a look at what that is. So we prefer to have all our perimeter fences um, to be solid permanent fencing. Um, there are ultimate coyote proof fences. We have a lot of coyotes here and in North America, I believe that's pretty well a common problem for everybody. So um, we have a perimeter fence that goes around all the sheep pastures. And then 
inside the perimeter we have about um, we have quite a few um, permanent paddocks as well they're divided up into five to ten acre paddocks they're also with the sheep page wire and then um, we can divide those permanent paddocks up even farther by running electric fences for rotational grazing. Oh, he missed the hole. A bit bigger at the top. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. There, maybe you can see that. They're bigger on the top and they get smaller down below. Um, the reason for that is that um, coyotes tend to go underneath and the smaller spacing down on the lower portion of the fence uh, the coyotes can't get through. Um, cow fencing would have much bigger spacing on them than sheep fencing because coyotes aren't really an issue for cows the way they are for sheep anyway. Um, also with perimeter fencing like this you want to get it as close to the ground as possible like we we have ours touching the ground because again coyotes want to go under so our our fencing is right to ground level and this is i think it's i think it's 48 inches tall our farm is has that all the way around so fencing um that's another consideration. How much do you want to fence? What type of fencing do you want to use? Do you want to use um, permanent fencing, um, electric fencing? Are you doing rotational grazing? Are you not going to graze at all? Are you just going to have a paddock where they can uh, get some ed exercise and go back in? Um, are you not going to need them whatsoever? They do have to be part of uh, a plan though. Because uh, fencing is also a very big expense. And the reason people have fencing is so that they can have control of their sheep. So they're not wandering onto your neighbor's property or onto public roads um, or into your crop fields. Um, and maybe you uh, want to control how well your pastures are being um, maintained so you're going to use them for rotational purposes in feeding your sheep but they're also used as predator control um, especially in countries where predators are an issue um, they're an issue across canada and i imagine in most of the united states and probably in other countries as well so uh, along with fences, another thing you might want to consider is um, do you want or need guardian animals? As you see, we have Ben and Katie here. These are working dogs, but are not uh, guardian dogs. These dogs are more, almost more like equipment. Um, they help us move and handle the sheep. But a guardian dog is an option if you have coyotes, as well as other guardian animals, donkeys, llamas. We've had uh, guardian dogs and llamas in our past. Um, but if you are gonna also invest in guardian animals to help protect your sheep, um, you need to know about the various uh, types of guardians that there are, what those guardians actually do and how they behave with your livestock and with you. Um, so it's another consideration yet again. Like I said, we've had various guardian animals in our past that have gone out with the sheep on their daily outings to the pasture. and. Um, each type behaves differently and not all types work well. Um, some animals work better with others and there's even variation within the breeds. Like you can have really, really good working dogs or you can have ones that harass the sheep all day long. Same with every other guardian animal. So um, 
you really have to do your research when you're um, adding guardian animals to your flock. And there's Ben. He's our he's like our shepherd here. He he takes all the sheep out to the pasture. This is his favorite job. Our dogs are not trained, but they are from working farms. And um, if you buy a border collie from a working farm where they actually have sheep and use their dogs for herding purposes, you will usually, it's passed on genetically. The dogs will work for you even untrained. You just have to do, give them minimal guidance uh, to let them know what you want. Border collies are fast learners. And then there's the sundry little things that uh, every sheep farm needs, like the pails for water if you're doing lemming jugs and, and all the medical supplies you need and the marker sprays and the nipples for bottles and the tube feeders and um, things for storing your milk replacer. So, um, are you just someone who wants to have uh, a dozen sheep and you're not going to be breeding or lambing them? Then your list of supplies is a lot smaller. You just need the basic stuff like uh, your dewormers because no matter what you're doing, you're probably going to need to be deworming. Maybe a halter for catching the, them and moving them around. They're handy. Um, Hoof trimmers, for sure. You have to have a pair of those. Then there's all the lambing supplies, the taggers, the tail dockers, um, needles, fringes, um, antibiotics, um, all that little sundry stuff. Um, a lot of these things are really good to have on hand at all times, just in case you need it. And yeah, we can go into that on another video as well. And whether you're breeding your sheep or just want them as pets, it's still very handy to keep records on your sheep. Um, I have a little lambing diary that I keep, which I write down all my pertinent information on our sheep each year as they go through the jugs. This all gets transferred over onto a computer. Um, we also have a stock recorder which also has all that information on it because um, I figure once you get past 50 sheep it's really 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 handy to have it all computerized because it can get quite confusing and those stock recorders are extremely expensive um, but they are also extremely handy at um, immediately if you have a sheep that's uh, down or whatever you can go to that sheep and scan it and you can get the history on that sheep right away um, when you're setting up breeding groups and stuff like that you can put into meds it's had when it was last vaccinated all that information can be put into those stock recorders because so they become an extremely handy tool they do break down mine have um, so I do back up everything on paper, but, um, uh, there's something if you're getting on the larger side, um, I would recommend having them as well. I always recommend that people get a veterinarian, um, and get to know him, have him out to the farm so he can see what you're doing, what your animals are, and, um, you can either pay him to vaccinate your animals and stuff for you. Or you can, I know um, the vets around here will often uh, run them through the chute with you and talk about how to give needles and what to do and are really good that way. Maybe some veterinarians don't do that. Um, most of the ones I know do um, so that you can do it on your own. But if it's, but most sheep farmers, after a few years, are doing it all on their own because a veterinarian is very expensive. And most of the stuff is basic things that you're going to have to do, like the deworming and vaccinating. There's no reason you can't learn that yourself. 
but it is extremely helpful to have a professional come out and show you how to do it properly, the amounts, uh, how to store your um, antibiotics and stuff properly and your dewormers and when to do it and stuff like that. So um, finding a vet that actually knows about sheep can be a little difficult. Um, you want a large animal vet for sure. Your basic cat and dog vet uh, is not usually the person you're going to go to. So definitely find a vet that you can establish a good rapport with and uh, go from there. And I guess um, the final thing when you're getting into sheep and becoming a sheep farmer, the final thing you need is the sheep. And uh, that is something you need to think long and hard about as well. All sheep are not the same. They all serve different purposes. They are, are all different sizes. They all have different lambing ratios. Um, breed characteristics. Um, are you wanting meat sheep? Are you wanting mother sheep? Are you wanting pedigree sheep? Are you wanting big sheep? Are you for the showing at the royal? Are you wanting little sheep that you can um, put out on pasture and are really thrifty? Are you wanting uh, to be a master spinner and you want to create all your own types of uh, yarns and blended wools? Um, if you are a spinner and weaver, do you prefer colored wools uh, to keep uh, your, your wool natural? Or do you like the dyeing process where you'd like maybe a finer fleeced white sheep and do all the dyeing? Um, what do you find attractive? Do you prefer heritage breeds or the tried and proven sheep? Um, do your research on your breeds so that you choose a breed that matches the goals for your sheep farming plan. Um, and again, there is no perfect sheep because there are so many things the sheep do. Um, and yeah, go around and visit f various farmers with different breeds. If you don't know them, read about them, figure out the ones you like the sound of and maybe go visit them and see, uh, see them working in action. Um, as you know, we have Dorsets. Uh, Gimli here is our Dorset Ram. And this was Felon here, he's a Suffolk Ram. These are the two breeds of choice for us. And we have our reasons for that. If you watch our past videos, you'll know those reasons. But uh, I imagine I'm gonna do another video on why we chose these two breeds as to be the ones we stick with but they are not for everybody so um they are very that is a very important consideration to make before you even just go get one um also if you're getting sheep don't get one i don't even advise getting two you have to have at least three um two is a couple three is a flock Sheep are prey animals, and they are flock animals. So if they don't have fellow sheep around them, they are very unhappy, they are very nervous, they are very f afraid. So they need a buddy. Um, if you had goats or something very, very similar to sheep, um, you could probably get away with having just one or two. But if you don't have any similar type animals, like a sheep and a pig or something, or a sheep and a horse, if they were the two single animals you had, they would become but they would become buddies probably because both those animals would be feeling lonely. Um, you don't want your sheep to feel lonely, so um, make sure that uh, you have a little flock if you're um, intending on getting sheep because um, if you want nice dispositions and sheep that aren't unhappy you need to have them in a little group same with rams they don't like to be alone either so Ernie is out in the field disking today he's uh, hoping to get the fields finished off before winter today, maybe tomorrow. 
Um, so I figured that was a good time to talk to you all, all about starting up a sheep farm. I think I covered everything, but there's, there's just so much involved. It's not a simple process. So really planning is a big, big, big part of it. And knowing uh, what you think you want, your, your plans may change as you go along. Felon, you're knocking me over, silly voice. But um, if this is the life for you, those are a few starting tips. And like I say, I will do future videos and uh, try to expand on some of those topics a little more. And if you have um, specific questions, uh, please feel free to ask. I try to respond to everybody who writes to me. Um, We've been doing this for about 22 years now, and I still don't feel like I'm an expert. I'm still learning things every day. So um, input's always handy or things that I missed. Um, feel free <laughs> to interact. We like that. Anyway, from me and Gimli, because Felon's uh, walked off now, it appears, um, we're going to call this a day, and I hope you'll join us again tomorrow for the next episode at Utopia Farms. <laughs> Bye for now.